إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار All praise and thanks belong to Allah the most high the most merciful We thank him and we praise him and we seek his protection from the evil of ourselves and the sins that we commit Indeed whosoever Allah guides no one can lead astray and whosoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. And I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah alone. And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. The best of speech is the book of Allah. And the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of religious matters are those that are innovated. And every religious innovation is a bid'ah. Every bid'ah is misguidance and every misguidance will be in hellfire. Amma ba'd. We've started the month of Rajab. And month of Rajab is one of the Ashur al-Hurum. They prohibited sacred months in Islam. And Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, Inna iddata shuhuri inda Allahi ithna ashara shahra yawma khalaqa as-samawati wal-ard minha arba'atun hurum. He says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the number of months, the number of months that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had decreed that they should be, that this is coming from Allah, are 12. Fi kitabillah. In the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, written down. يَوْمَ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ From the day that Allah created the heavens and the earth, He decreed and He had written that there will be 12 months. Among those, مِنْهَا أَرْبَعَةٌ حُرُمْ There are four among them that are حُرُمْ Where fighting, aggression, injustice is particularly prohibited in them. Initiating a fight is haram in them. And the pre-Islamic Arabs knew about this and they respected it most of the time. That this is why it was a special time, so they would not transgress each other's rights. They may do that after these months. They may initiate fighting after these months, but not in those months. But they sometimes would manipulate these months. These months, by the way, are three consecutive and one on its own. Dhul Qa'da, Dhul Hijjah, and Muharram are the three consecutive ones. And the one that stands on its own is the month of Rajab. So pre-Islamically, it was a 
venerated month, respected month. And they had special rituals and ceremonies in it. Particular beliefs about it. What, part of what we want to do, inshallah, in today's khutbah, is find out what is legitimate about the month of Rajab and what is not. And how do we approach it? In particular, inshallah, with regards to what comes after it. So the month of Rajab is a sacred month. And Allah says about them, فَلَا تَظْلِمُوا فِيهِنَّ أَنفُسَكُمْ Do not wrong yourselves in them. Do not transgress against yourselves in them. And this has several layers to it. The first layer is that do not manipulate these months as the pre-Islamic Arabs used to do. So if they would go into the month of Dhul Qaeda and Dhul Hijjah, they couldn't wait and withhold their aggression and transgression till after the month of Muharram. So sometimes what they would do is that they would initiate fighting in the month of Muharram and then compensate for it in the months that come after, month of Safar and so on. So Allah says about that, that إِنَّمَا النَّسِيءُ زِيَادَةٌ فِي الْكُفْرِ When you manipulate and delay what Allah had ordained, indeed this is an additional disbelief and anger coming to you from Allah Azza wa Jal. And in it, there's a lesson for us. That they would do that thinking that they were benefiting themselves. Manipulate what Allah had revealed. Change it, alter it. Move the days, thinking that this is for our own advantage. What does Allah say about it? فَلَا تَظْلِمُوا فِيهِنَّ أَنفُسَكُمْ This is when you're doing it, this is zulm for yourself. Subhanallah. He's saying you're hurting yourself. But wait a second. They were doing that thinking that they're benefiting themselves. Because if they assault another, then they take their money or their property or they seek revenge. They think we are benefiting ourselves. Allah is saying no. When you manipulate what I have revealed and you change it, who's the first person that you're hurting? Sometimes when you're thinking that you're helping yourself, you are hurting yourself. So it's saying, لا تظلموا فيهن أنفسكم do not go against Allah because that is an injustice against your own self. You're taking it to hellfire. And that is a great aggression. Before anybody else, before your own self, subhanAllah. The second layer of it is that do not initiate fighting in it. Any aggression, any injustice against any other person. Do not initiate. Because it's a more special month. Zulm is haram any time. But especially in those sacred, prohibited months, it is more egregious, more egregious, more sinful. There is also a third layer to it. And that third layer is, do not commit sins in them. Do not commit injustice against your own self by sinning against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So sin is haram throughout Sin is haram throughout. But when you come to a sacred month, Allah is saying, pay extra attention to my prohibitions. Because He said in the Quran, do not commit aggression in them. لا تظلموا فيهن أنفسكم Islamically, in addition to this, Islamically, there are a lot of beliefs that circulate about the month of Rajab. Some people believe that there is a special reward for fasting in it, or praying in it. But several of the scholars of Islam have said that there is really nothing authentic, sahih, reported about fasting in the month of Rajab. Or about praying in the month of Rajab, meaning there is no authentic hadith. There are some weak ones. But authentic hadith that says if you pray, that particular prayer... Spend that particular night in prayer. Fast that particular day in Rajab. Fast most of Rajab or some of Rajab, you're going to get these rewards for it. There is no authentic hadith. Ibn Rajab, Ibn Hajar and others have said that. There is nothing authentic about that. So if there is a habit, a cultural practice that we have about the month of Rajab, some think that a particular sacrifice, like Udhiyah, some think that a particular Umrah, none of that is really authentic in the Sunnah of the Prophet 
Some of us also think, if you go look at some Islamic calendars, when you come to the 27th of Rajab, what will you see? What is written right there? Isra wal Mi'raj, right? If you go to the books of Sirah, especially those that verify the information and trace it, they'll tell you that there is more than one saying about when the Isra and Mi'raj took place. None of them, by the way, is authentically reported back to the Prophet ﷺ. So some of the ulama have said, we do not know in fact the year when Al-Isra Al-Mi'raj happened, or the month, or the day. We know it happened. We know that it happened from the Qur'an. And from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, we know that it has happened. But we then do not know what year it happened, or what month, or what day. And you go to a book of Sirah, like a Rahiq al Maktoum, just as an example, the sealed nectar, and see the six or more opinions about when it happened, and that none of them actually have anything authentic back to the Prophet. ﷺ. Now think about it. The Prophet knew that day, and he knew the month, and he knew the year. But he did not bother sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to remind the Muslims after he was going to come a particular day or a particular month where the Isra al-Mi'raj happened, commemorate it in this way or in that way. He did not. Which tells you something. So when we're going to come to the 27th of Rajab, there is this default assumption among many Muslims, this is al-Isra al-Mi'raj. But it's really not built on any sound evidence that tells you that that's the month or that is the day. Basically, we do not know when exactly it happened, but we know that it actually happened. So, what is special about the month of Rajab? When you see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had structured these sacred months, you begin to understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may be telling us through the month of Rajab. The three other months that we talked about, Dhul Qa'dah, Dhul Hijjah, and Muharram, are linked to what? To Hajj, pilgrimage. And now, this individual sacred month that is standing on its own, what is it close to? It's closest to the month of Ramadan. And it is as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subtly is telling you, now I am preparing you through the sacred month for what is going to come after, the month of Ramadan. And some of the Salaf, pious predecessors, what do they say about the month of Rajab? They say the month of Rajab is the month of al ghars planting the seed. And Shahru Sha'ban, Shahru Suqya. This is when you're going to be watering those seeds in your field. Wa Shahru Ramadan, Shahru Al Hasad. And the month of Ramadan is the month of harvest. You think about it. They're talking about the month of Ramadan, the anticipation, the preparation for the month of Ramadan. From what month? The month of Rajab. It says you start planting the seeds for what's going to grow and be harvested in the month of Ramadan, in the month of Rajab. So you begin with Rajab and you continue and increase. You'll see that, subhanAllah, in the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, how the intensity, there's more reported about fasting in the month of Sha'ban than in the month of Rajab. So there's this gradualism of increased intensity. The month of Rajab with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does He say about it? This is a sacred month. Do not transgress. Meaning now, hold back your bad things, your sins. Notice what you're doing. Stop doing them. And then when you move on into the month of Sha'ban, but you don't have to wait actually to the month of Sha'ban for that to start. But as you move on to the month of Sha'ban, the intensity of your good deeds increase. This is a suqya. This is watering your plant, watering your crop, so that it will grow. And then when you reach the month of Ramadan, now you're ready to harvest all your hard work for the last two months. That happens in the month of Ramadan. Now for us to understand it, 
think about the following. Any example you can take and pick from your life. I'm going to just pick a couple. A farmer, let's say. Or a person who's traveling. Let's begin with that. You want to travel. And you know that your travel time, travel day is that particular day. And that particular month. When do you start getting ready? On that day? When do you start checking your passport? Packing your bags? Planning your trip? Reserving hotels? And all of these things. Checking your ticket. Saying who will take you to the airport. Planning what you're going to be doing there. When do you start doing that? If you're excited about the trip, if you're looking forward, two, even three, a month before, you're getting ready for it. That's what I'm going to take. That's what I'm going to pack. There's, that's the place where I'm going to stay. I'm going to be with these people. I'll be driving this and that. You'll be getting ready for it. So by the time the day of departure comes, you're ready. And you know what you're going to be doing there. Compare that to someone else who only starts thinking about all of this on the day of departure. If he does not miss his flight, he's going to probably have a miserable vacation or trip. And that all has to do with planning. Think about another example. I'm not going to use the example of farmers because most of us don't farm. But you can think about it. That farmers, in fact, the crop, the food that you're going to be eating in the summer, farmers start planting in, or taking care of their soil in February or March or April for you to be eating something three, four months after. Think about somebody who is preparing to run for a marathon or something. Two people. One person who starts now is, I know that I'm going to be running after two months from now. How do you start getting ready for it? Versus another who says, don't worry about it. The first person starts changing their, his diet. Starts exercising gradually. And increases the, the distance as the time approaches. The other person every day that comes, he says, oh, that doesn't matter. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. Both of them arrive on the day when they're supposed to run. What happens to each? The person who trained and was ready is likely to be able to finish the race. The other person who was not prepared for it starts and could be excited. But after the few first kilometers, he starts slowing down. And by the way, that's what happens to a lot of us in Ramadan. When you don't get ready for it, Ramadan starts all of a sudden, takes us by surprise. This is the first day. And you're excited. But how long does this, does this excitement last? Few days, few weeks, or oh, not few weeks, few days, the first week. And after that, the evidence of lack of conditioning, lack of training, lack of desire shows itself because I have not been ready for this. So mentally, physically, emotionally, I'm not conditioned. So my interest declines. Physically, I'm declining in my worship. My interest is not as intense as it was before. So I go back into my older habits or into a monotonous type of fasting, and I wake up again when Ramadan is about to leave. That is a person who has not been able to take advantage of Ramadan. And the reason is, he was not able to prepare for it before. Starting, and it's not early, starting from the month of Rajab. And we'll see in the second khutbah, few things that we can do. To prepare ourselves for the month of Ramadan, أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه. الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وأصلي وأسلم على رسوله محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم The first thing that we have to do in the month of Rajab for the sake of the month of Rajab 
is to leave angering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through anything that he hates. Notice, am I or do I have something bad that I'm doing? Some bad habit. And we have to leave it. You have to let go of that addiction, the addiction of the dunya. The monopoly of the shaitan over our lives, we have to free ourselves of that. Because now you're getting ready for something important that will follow. And you cannot do it while the shaitan is standing on your way, while the shaitan has control over you and your life. So, فَلَا تَظْلِمُوا فِيهِنَّ أَنفُسَكُمْ You start making dua for Allah Azza wa Jal. Ya Allah, help me to leave this bad thing. Especially because it is more sinful in a sacred month. Ya Allah, help me leave this bad thing, that bad habit, that bad company, this bad place, this bad site, this bad practice, whatever it is. Start making dua to Allah Azza wa Jal to help you to leave all of these bad things. <coughs> Not only now for the month of Rajab, because your journey only begins in Rajab. Your journey is till the end of Ramadan, bi'ithnillah. And now you're on it. If you choose to ride that train, you are on it now till the end of Ramadan. And to be able to receive that harvest in Ramadan, it has to start from now. You have to plant the seed. So the first seed that we're planting, bi'ithnillah, is leaving haram. So that it becomes easy when? In the month of Ramadan. It's not all of a sudden that you're telling yourself now the month of Ramadan comes. Stop all the bad things. Stop it from now. So this is the first seed that we want to plant. The second seed that we want to plant is now based on what is it that you want to accomplish as a farmer. What is it that you want to harvest? Tomatoes, carrots, what is it that you want to harvest? Then you pick those seeds and you harvest, you put it in the ground now. And you start doing what? Taking care of it. And growing that. Increasing that. So that by the time the month of Ramadan comes, that practice had reached a sort of maturity that you can maintain. Not only the first week, not only on the odd nights of the last ten, throughout the month of Ramadan. That's the race that we're going through. Can we finish? So what is the seed that you want to get? You want the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to attain Jannah. You want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to compensate us for all the time that we waste. Imagine how many hours and days and weeks and months and years we've wasted of our lives. That Allah gives you in the month of Ramadan in Laylatul Qadr the chance to compensate for all of that. Better than a thousand months. To compensate, live as if it's a second time, a second life for you, filled of worship. But who gets it? The one who has planted. So you start bi'ithnillah. You want to be reading the Qur'an in the month of Ramadan, where is the seed of that reading now? You plant it. And it doesn't have to be grand now. One page. If that's a lot, five ayahs. But daily. Because you're going to build up bi'ithnillah. This is Rajab, right? So this is, you're still warming up. Five ayahs. You can do more, one page. But continuous. So you're planting now the seed of the Qur'an. What else do you want to do in the month of Ramadan? I want to fast. Some of us need to train for that. So you start fasting. It doesn't mean to fast the entire month of Rajab. No, start slow. Mondays. Thursdays, 13, 14, 15, start. But let it be continuous. So fasting now is part of you. What else do you want to do? Want to be able to pray at night and be alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have the strength to continue to do this every night in the nights of Ramadan. We need that strength and conditioning for worship. How do you start? Plant the seed right now. Plan before you go to sleep or you wake up early before Fajr. 15 minutes, 20 minutes of salah, included and mixed with dua to Allah Azza wa Jal. But every night, plant that seed. And as you continue now, every night, as you continue doing it, bi'ithnillah, with time, weeks, you'll be able to increase that. 15 to 20 minutes, 20 minutes to 25 minutes, see what you can do and what your schedule allows, what your body can take. But then when you arrive in the month of Ramadan, you have this reservoir of 
practice of reading the Quran, fasting, praying at night, and also giving sadaqah. You have it. And that practice will only grow and be stronger in the month of Ramadan. And you will, you will find out that that particular Ramadan that you got ready for will be different than any other Ramadan. It will not take you by surprise. It will not run away out of your hands. You will actually be enjoy it and get stuff from it. But it takes like anything in life takes planning and dedication. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rabbal Alameen, help us to be of those who do not transgress themselves in the month of Rajab, and who observe the sanctity of the month of Rajab. And Ya Rabbal Alameen, allow us to plant the seeds of righteousness in the month of Rajab, and allow us to harvest those seeds in the month of Ramadan. Ya Rahman, Ya Rabbal Alameen, allow us to reach the month of Ramadan. Allow us to reach that forgiveness of that month, the elevation of that month, the worship of that month, and make us of all us and our families and all Muslims to taste the sweetness of Iman in the month of Ramadan. And so that when we leave the month of Ramadan, we're completely forgiven of all sins, of all ma'asiyah, and what we have left behind, what angers you, and committed you ourselves to what pleases you, Ya Arham ar Rahimin. Ya Allah, forgive us all of our sins, and give us strength to worship you. Fill us with Iman, fill us with love for you and your Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and make us hate what you hate, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Make us hate sin, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Make us stay away from sin, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. And love, make us of those who love righteousness and stay close to the righteous, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Ya Allah, grant us the best in this life and in the hereafter. And protect us from all evil in this life and in the hereafter. And we ask you for the best that your Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had asked you for. And we seek your protection from anything that your Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had sought your protection from. Ya Rabbal Alameen, we ask you for heaven. And anything that will take us and bring us closer to it. And we seek your protection from hellfire and anything that will take us closer to it. Ya Allah, we ask you that you unite the Muslims upon your book and the sunnah of your Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that you grant them success on this earth. Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. Allahumma a'inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Allahumma ya muqallib al-quloobi thabbit quloobana ala deenik. Allahumma ya musarrif al-quloobi sarrif قلوبنا على طاعتك اللهم أدخلنا الجنة برحمتك يا رب العالمين وعذنا من النار وأهلينا وذرياتنا وسائل المسلمين والمسلمات يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين وأقم الصلاة